Welcome to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show, a real estate investment program. Listen and learn how to use real estate to build wealth and passive income streams for you and your family. We bring you experts every day to discuss and answer your questions on everything from single family homes all the way up to 600 plus unit apartment complexes. And now, the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Welcome to the show. My name is Al Gordon, and as always, we're working on your financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about something called a mastermind group. And when I say that phrase, mastermind group, you know, the first thing that pops into my crazy brain is a flashback to my youth and all of the comic books that my mother made me throw away. Yeah, you got it. I'm, I'm still a little bitter about that. I'm sure you are too. But think about it. There was always a group of super villains out there that plagued the heroes that I adored. I mean, Superman, he had his evil mastermind group. You know, that consisted of the likes of Lex Luthor, Brainiac, General Zod, and, you know, there's, there's a whole bunch of others. And, and, and from time to time, they would gang up on Superman. Sometimes they'd kind of win a battle, but they wouldn't seem to win the war. I know. It's just the way the world happens, unless you're talking about Bizarro Superman. And then that's kind of a completely different comic book. But Batman... He had his evil mastermind group, too, and they would do the same things. You know, they would they would gang up on Batman. I mean, the likes of the Joker, the Penguin, and even the Riddler. Not to mention all those others out there. So, I've, okay, I've, I've covered DC and I've covered Marvel. So that, that should take care of just about everybody in America. Because you're either into DC or you're into Marvel, right? Oh, but then there's those other comic books out there. I mean, I, I can't cover them all. I'm not going to try to. There's also the thing called the dark side of the force. You know, that was a huge group of bad guys with laser weapons and goofy plastic armor. And they had these ginormous spaceships and they were obsessed with taking over everything in a galaxy far, far away. Okay, enough of that. Have you heard the saying... No Man is an Island. You know, that phrase was published by a gentleman by the name of John Donne, who was a 17th century English author. And I believe what he's referring to is the concept that no person is 100% self-sufficient. In fact, we all rely on other people at different points in our lives. You can't do this life thing by yourself. You can try, but it's going to be pretty, pretty tough. And not only in our personal lives, but in our working lives, we rely on other people to get things done. And having a team that you can depend on in any environment is critical to your success. I mean, even if we go back to talking about the, the supervillains, you know, they would gang up and they became a more powerful force together than alone. Now, the concept of a mastermind group, it's been around for quite a long time. But the phrase mastermind group was first coined by a gentleman by the name of Napoleon Hill in his book, Think and Grow Rich, which was written way back in 1937. Actually, it was written before then. It was published in 1937. So, yeah, the concept has been around for a while. Well, most certainly since I've been around. And according to Napoleon Hill, he defines a mastermind group as a coordination of knowledge and effort in a spirit of harmony between two or more people for the attainment of a definite purpose. That's the way he wrote it. So another way to look at it is, well, it's kind of like this. The whole is greater than the sum of the parts. So if I give you a math equation of one plus one equals three, am I right or am I wrong? I mean, in 
legitimate math, one plus one doesn't really equal three. But what I'm trying to point out here is that when two brains are working together, they're actually equivalent to three brains on their own. It's a principle that works exponentially, meaning that the more minds you add, the more powerful the result can be for you. So imagine this, if you will. Imagine the power of a 15-person mastermind group. I mean, a group this big has the potential to produce valuable information that will propel you faster than anything else. I, I truly believe it. I do. Because I participate in a mastermind group. And what I find in the mastermind group is that everybody brings their A game to the table. If you've got everybody bringing their A game to the table and they're presenting their A game to each other, everybody else has the ability to learn from everybody else's A game and therefore enhance their own A game. Hey, when we come back from the break, we're going to get back into these mastermind groups. Listening to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show will change your life. We will teach you how to create wealth and passive income so you can be financially free. And now, back to your host. Welcome back to the show. So on today's show, we're we're talking about a concept known as a mastermind group. And you may have heard of a mastermind group. You may have never heard of a mastermind group. Maybe you read... Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, and the concept just kind of just kind of blew by you. When you read Napoleon Hill's work, I mean, he flat out tells you that you may not be ready for the information that's contained in the book. I mean, he makes that point multiple times in the book, and I think he's right. What I'm attempting to do for you today is to kind of break down what a mastermind group is and to give you some examples of how that mastermind group can work in your favor. In order to do that, we have to continue into the explanation of what a mastermind group is. And simply, it's the concept of putting multiple people together so that everybody has the opportunity to learn from each other. If I take you back to college, remember when you had to do group projects? It always boiled down to you would have an assignment and you would break that assignment apart. In other words, Susie would get part A and Johnny would get part B and you would keep part C. And you would all go and work on your individual components of the project. And you would become kind of the smartest person in the group with regards to those elements. And then you come back together You would share the information with each other, thereby helping each other to learn. And you would assemble the results into the completed project. And then you'd present the project to your instructor. You know, that might have been in written form. It might have been in an oral presentation. It might have been in both. That's kind of what a mastermind group is without the homework. So let me give you some what I think are examples of mastermind groups throughout history. Now, you may have never heard of these groups, and that's okay. There was a group that was established in 1727 by none other than Benjamin Franklin, and it was called the Junto Group. It's J-U-N-T-O. Hopefully I pronounced it correctly. So the Junto initially consisted of 12 members who met together for mutual improvement by discussing things like morals, politics, and the scientific topics of the day. In the uh, late 1930s and into the 1940s, there was a group of English authors, and they called themselves the Inklings. And they would get together to meet, and part of their group 
was focused on reading and discussing each author's unfinished works. And by doing this, they were able to express their ideas to the other group members and get feedback from them, which would in turn stimulate more creative thoughts in the originating author. You know, some of the more notable members of that group included people like C.S. Lewis, J.R.R. Tolkien, and Owen Barfield. That didn't stop there. There was a, another group called Nine Old Men. Now, I, I can imagine what's, you know, the image that just blew up in your mind when I said that. But Nine Old Men was really a group of Disney animators that were responsible for many of Walt Disney's hits from the late 1930s through the 1970s. You know, these guys put together classics that you and I remember. We've seen them. Things like Peter Pan, Cinderella, and Alice in Wonderland. These were all birthed in those mastermind group meetings. So whether the mastermind group is meeting for professional reasons, political reasons, inspirational reasons. People have been meeting together in group collaboration for centuries. It's been going on a long time, long before Napoleon Hill penned the term mastermind group. And people have been achieving success as a result of being a part of these groups. And I guarantee you, the concept of a mastermind group has been demonstrated to you throughout your life. You've seen it in action. You've probably participated in one yourself, whether you recognized you were participating in one or not. And it's the result of tapping into the minds of several like-minded individuals that causes a group member to experience a myriad of benefits. Let me just jump into what some of those benefits are. One of the benefits I think is, is very important is accountability in the form of thinking ahead and making a plan of action and then presenting that plan of action to your group. See, what you're doing there is a little thing called goal setting. And goal setting is very important for everything you do in your life. Another thing a mastermind group can provide for you is accountability to act on that plan. In other words, for you to implement that plan and to share its implementation with the other members, which, which causes another form of benefit in the form of feedback and constructive criticism from others who want to see you succeed. Absolutely want to see you succeed. You get access to new resources. You get insight you might not have otherwise gained. And you get motivation to grow and to do better, which helps you to avoid stagnation. You know, participating in a mastermind group will take some time and energy on your part, but the clarity and insight it provides you is well worth the time spent. When we come back from the break, more on mastermind groups. Stick around. Welcome back to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. It's time to turn up the volume and fine-tune your passive income plan so you can create the lifestyle you've always wanted. Welcome back to the show. So on today's show, we're talking about mastermind groups. And I'm not talking about, you know, the, the evil supervillain geniuses that, you know, we kind of grew up with in our comic books and, you know, on cartoons on Saturday morning. I'm talking about groups of people that come together for a common purpose. It doesn't matter what they're doing in their lives for employment or even if they're not employed. It doesn't matter what their religious beliefs are, unless, of course, you're having a specific mastermind group to discuss a certain form of religion. And even then, having other opinions can add to the balance. 
You know, this this whole concept of mastermind groups might not be intuitive to you, especially if you don't think you've ever been in a mastermind group. But I want to make it absolutely clear that one of the most valuable assets you can have for your real estate investing business or any business endeavor. I talk about real estate on the show, but mastermind groups can work in other areas of your life. I'm actually in a mastermind group that has nothing to do with real estate. Yeah, that's right. I'm in two groups because I find it gives me what I crave, what I need. And I think it's very, very important to me. You know, I can honestly tell you that when it comes to my real estate portfolio and the resources that I have access to and the knowledge base that I have today with regards to real estate would not have been possible without my mastermind group. In fact, most of what I know about real estate investing came from being a part of my mastermind group. Yeah. And and I'll just, I'll just lay it out for you. My mastermind mind group with regards to real estate investing is a subset of my Lifestyles Unlimited membership. See, the people in that group I met through Lifestyles Unlimited, and we decided to get together and take all of the education, all of the mentoring to a different level. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I mean, we want to see you succeed at Lifestyles Unlimited. We really do. Whether you choose to be a member or not, we want to see you succeed because we believe that there's a different path to retirement than what you're on right now. And that the path that society laid out for you, which is no different than the path that society laid out for me, is flawed. Now, within my my real estate mastermind group, I learned how to buy deals correctly. I learned how to protest my property taxes. I learned how to find the best real estate attorney. I learned how to create special provisions in my lease. I found competent property managers. I found my CPA through them, as well as excellent tradespeople for any type of work that needs to be done. All from my mastermind group. Yeah. You know, I've actually learned more than I could possibly share with you today. I found resources on anything involved with real estate investing through that group. I've also done multiple deals with someone in the group. I bought three of that person's properties. Two of them I've already closed on. The third one I'm in the process of of buying. So I can't emphasize enough how it's more powerful than you're probably giving it credit for. And if you're currently not in a mastermind group, I encourage you to start one. And I don't care what you focus on. I think it's important for you to start one. Let's just jump off of real estate for a second. Let's just talk about professional development. Maybe you want to get better at what you do at your job. Maybe you start a mastermind group that's focused on whatever it is you do for employment. And you get somebody else to sit down with you and talk about relative information. Now, it might get a little sticky depending on what you do for a living with regards to who you can bring into the fold. But you really ought to think about starting one. And let me, let me jump back to real estate because I think it's, it's easier to share the rest of the information that I have for you this segment if we just focus on real estate investing. You know, there is no hard and fast rule about who has to be in your group. For example, my group, it consists of real estate investors and everyone in the group owns rental property. That, that was a condition for starting the group. And the members of that group bring a lot of other specialties to the table, which really enhances the overall group. I mean, one guy, he owns his own business. One gal, she's retired, living off of the income that real estate produces for her. Another lady, she's a school teacher. She's got two rental houses. She wants more. That guy over there, he works for a bank, one of the really big banks. Now, he's not a bank teller or anything like that. He doesn't do loans or anything like that. He tracks the movement of money of that bank. Kind of an interesting thing he does. Just those four people right there, they have different life experiences, and they also are of different ages. They all share a commonality called real estate investing and the fact that they own real property. You know, what's really key is that the people that you have in your mastermind group, they have to have certain traits. They have to be open. They have to be honest and they have to trust each other. You know, we don't keep secrets from each other and no one would ever go behind anyone's back in a real estate deal because, you know, we discuss everything openly and honestly. And I consider every one of them a core member of my real estate investing team, even though their name is not going 
on the contract for purchase. They bring something to me that I need. It's really powerful. When we come back from the break, we're going to talk about how you can start your own mastermind group. Stick around. Here's Lifestyles Unlimited founder and CEO, self-made multimillionaire and national radio host, Del Wamsley, on getting the information you need to get through this. So you ask yourself, isn't this the wrong time to get out of the stock market? Very well could be. But maybe it might go down. And then you ask yourself, man, if I would have had some of that money, I could have used it. People are going to be afraid. And the people who are in real estate that are losing money are going to be afraid. And they're going to want to get out. And when they do, we're going to be able to go in and buy at very advantageous prices that are going to change our family's future, quite honestly. So you need information on how to do that. You need the knowledge of how to get through this. You need to get into Lifestyles right now. Lifestyles Unlimited has been helping people succeed since 1990. Join us for our free online real estate workshop and learn the seven principles we teach to run our businesses and provide for our families. Register at LifestylesUnlimitedWorkshop.com. with the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. We're here to answer your questions and help you become financially free. Welcome back to the show. So on today's show, we've been talking about a mastermind group. And a mastermind group is a collection of people that are like-minded to a certain degree and are focused on achieving the same types of results. That's probably the best way I can describe it. As we went to break, I said I was going to give you some ideas about how you can start your own mastermind group. And it's it's something you really need to consider doing. I mean, if you're already a member of Lifestyles Unlimited, you already are in a great place because you're already associated with people that are doing the same things that you're trying to do. And we have gobs of mastermind groups within Lifestyles Unlimited because we find that when you break it down to a small group setting, it's easier to filter through some of the noise. And that doesn't mean that people in that little mastermind group are on their own doing their own thing. No, they're just a small group working on a commonality. So if you want to start your own mastermind group, you can start by networking with people in the real estate investor community. That's why I said, if you're already a member of Lifestyles Unlimited, you've got an edge. You know, but for those of you that aren't, or you want to go at this alone, that I'm not telling you you shouldn't, but I think it's a bad idea. You know, you can check with other local investor clubs. You can, you can go to those meetup type events. But what you're looking for is somebody that is either at your level or higher. Someone that has maybe a different background than yours, but shares your goal of getting to the next level in their real estate investing career. You know, focus on someone that maybe has some similar interests. In other words, maybe someone who wants to build a rental portfolio and start meeting with them on a regular basis. So you, you found somebody and you're like, okay, what do we talk about? Well, the first thing you need to do is you need to pick a topic. You need to specifically state what that mastermind group is going to be about and be as specific or as general as you need to be, knowing that the more specific the focus, the stronger the growth in that area is going to be. You also need to pick some ground rules. I mean, rules are important. That's why we have laws in our society. Are you going to have consequences for people that miss so many meetings? Is there going to be a time limit? Are you going to come up with a few of these foundational rules to ensure that everyone is on the same page and they know what they're signing up for? Now, one, one of the things that, that I have seen is there is a recommendation out there that's parroted that your group shouldn't be any bigger than 15 people. And I'm not saying just run right out and get 15 people. I'm saying start with somebody else. You also have to figure out how often you plan to, to meet. You could do once a week, maybe every other week, maybe once a month. And what kind of time limit are you going to put on it? Maybe a two hour max. You've got to decide, find that person and decide. And when you decide those things, you need to come up with an agenda. I know 
Sounds like work. But having an agenda will keep the meeting moving. And it shows respect for everybody's time, especially if you follow the agenda. You know, the agenda doesn't have to be set in stone. And usually agendas have a tendency to evolve over time. But don't just start a meeting without an agenda because everybody's going to start off not knowing what's going on. You know, one of the things that I do in my real estate investing mastermind group is we have a roundtable discussion where each person gets about five minutes to discuss what they're working on or to bring up any issues they're seeing or experiencing in the marketplace. From time to time, we actually invite a guest speaker over to talk about a very specific topic that's of interest to every one of us in the group. You know, I, I don't want to get into a big discussion of, you know, how to run a meeting because you know how to do that. But I think once you get that group up and running, you have to keep an eye out for new members. And it's been my experience that mastermind groups tend to be invite only, and there's a good reason for it. You know, I think your mastermind group will need to maintain a high level of focus, and it needs to be filled with other motivated individuals. You know, some masterminds even have an application and interview process to join. Mine doesn't. But others, they just go with a recommendation from the existing members. That's kind of how we've added the bulk of the people. That's how I was added to the group, to be honest with you. Somebody said, hey, you know what? We're doing this. You seem to be doing the same thing. Want to come check us out? And I said, sure. Been with them ever since. But my recommendation is, you know, when you're starting this group, to add that third person that the two of you that started this group agree to bring into your group. You don't have a meeting or two with them. And if it works out, cool. Then go find somebody else to bring in. But don't be in a rush to add too many people at one time or feel that you have to build a large group up immediately. I got to get to 15 people. Remember, this is about quality. It's not about quantity. You need the right individuals in your group so that you can build strong relationships of trust. And you know what? Kind of going back to the business rules, maybe you ought to consider having an attendance policy. We do. We get everyone to commit to attending every meeting. And if you're not going to make it, you know, we got a little group text. And if I can't make it, I say, hey, you know what? I can't do it. I'm closing on a house. I let everybody know it's a professional courtesy. Now, what if you need to remove people? You know, I think it's important to have the right people in your group in order for you to have the most success. But from time to time, you may have to remove more than one person. So don't be afraid to do that. You know, anyone who doesn't show up or someone who's toxic in the group or has a pessimistic attitude or brings the meetings down, they need to go. Because if you don't, you'll regret it because the other members of your group won't stand for it and they'll just, they'll just leave. There's a couple ways you can, you can remove somebody. And I think a simple way is just to send an email with a message kind of along this lines. You know, we've had some members that have not attended many of the meetings. I'm requesting that anyone who does not want to participate to please let me know so that we can remove you from the group email list. See, what what you did there is you gave them an out because maybe they don't want to be there anyhow. Or you can just do it the way I do, which is I just call them on the phone and just say, hey, you know what? We'd love to have you, but you haven't been coming. So is it a timing issue or maybe we're just not a good fit for you? Get them to open up. Find out the real root cause. Because when you find out that real root cause, you might find out that maybe they're just dealing with fear. Who knows? So at the end of the day, participation is really the key. I mean, you want a group where everyone participates in your roundtable discussions if you do this. And if you have this, trust me, the meetings are going to take on a life of their own. And this is where the real mastermind concept occurs. Once everyone has heard from the group, the meeting can take on a new form where members can jump into a conversation, share what they believe that would add value and benefit the entire group because that's what it's all about. So don't be afraid to get started. And if you want to get started with learning how to correctly invest in residential income producing real estate, go to freeworkshoplivestream.com.
The Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented on the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show constitutes an endorsement recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.